Hello everybody. I had a request from someone called uh, Chris Murta, I hope I'm pronouncing that properly, uh, to say could I do something on cascade trees. So uh, I thought I'd start off with this which is a Catoniaster and um, as I zoom in slightly we better see hopefully that it's coming into flower and uh, it's a little bit overgrown and needs some trimming back in a few places. Uh, other than that, this really doesn't need a lot done with it each year. In some ways it's kind of a, a boring tree. Um, in between the times when it has these glorious little pink opening to white flowers and uh, then later in the year it has uh, red berries, which is nice. But in terms of actually working on the tree, uh, mainly it's a question of trying to keep these pads in proportion, um, stopping them getting too overgrown, uh, stopping all the pieces like this that are growing downwards, and just developing the pads. Um, it's quite slow growing, and I've had this kind of bold patch in the centre here for a while, but finally. I have a shoot which I can train. Uh, hopefully over the next few years I'll be able to train another pad in this direction somewhere and, and maybe even use this as well. So we shall see. The top's getting a bit congested and I do have a T formation here. Um, I will be losing this branch in favour of this one growing at the back soon. Uh, but yeah so that's that's my Cotoniaster. Some people call it a cotton Easter. And all in all, yeah, I like it. Okay, so here's another of my cascade trees in training. Um, this uh, is a what is this? This is a shrubby honeysuckle. In fact, I think I featured this in uh, a video on how shrubby honeysuckles that I did recently. Uh, again, this is being grown in the Cascade style, but uh, much more straighter um, design. And again, it's just a question of this tree in this case has grown in this way quite naturally. The top part had died off, so it was um, ginned and I have a couple of pieces at the top which have formed quite reasonable pads and I'm just rebuilding and refining the pads um, using a clip and grow method just pruning things back as they grow in the wrong direction um, or if they're in the wrong place such as this piece for example get rid of that um, yeah, so just a fairly simple exercise. It takes a while. Um, it's not a shortcut by any means. I have another Taniasta here that I think this one is going to be more of a semi cascade style. Um, I'm probably going to lose this bottom section at some point. It's a bit scraggly. But again, it's the pot's a bit <laughs> ropey. It fell off the bench. Actually, I think it got knocked off the bench, if I'm honest. Um, but yeah, I hope you can see. It has an interesting trunk shape. Uh, the top needs some development and styling. But at the moment, I'm just going to let this grow for a, a year or so. Um, and fatten up some. Uh, yeah, so there's another couple of examples of ways you can do a cotoniaster, uh, not a cotoniaster, a shrubby honeysuckle can be made into a cascade bonsai. Okay, so uh, here we have um, some of the trees that I've grown from seed and or cutting uh, over the last few years I've built up a little bit of a, a collection um, 
I have another bench of a similar size with uh, the same sort of number of trees. Uh, this lot I've got some oak that I've grown from acorns, um, several different species of willow, uh, some alder. What else have I got in here? Uh, sweet chestnut, larches, apples, uh, pyrocanthus, velcova, all sorts. So I won't insult your intelligence by saying that I'm going to pick out at random a couple of trees that are suitable for use as a cascade. I've looked through these before. Um, I do, as I say, I do have another bench of um, trees, which is mainly ash and field maple and things. Uh, but I have this little Catonia that I've picked out from this bunch. Uh, trying to flower, which is quite nice. Um, I think that's got some potential. And also uh, this apple. And lastly, uh, this is a type of willow. So again, I think it's got a bit of potential. So we'll take those over to the workbench and um, see what can be done. Okay, so here we are um, with the three trees and uh, all have some potential in some way, shape or form. And um, I'm going to keep them in the same pots. I'm not going to repot them or anything. And I'm going to be looking at creating relatively small trees um, in the cascade style. So, yeah, let's start off. Oh, well, let's go alphabetically and we'll start off with the apple. Okay, so here we have the apple. And um, obviously I'm going to use this piece as a, the the drooping part of the cascade, the cascade part of the cascade, uh, and this part will become the top. Um, now I'm going to shorten this quite considerably, um, and I want the, the growing energy to go into this piece, so I'm going to. Shorten that there and bring this down. This will be the new leader just here. Um, let's have a look. A weed there which is obscuring part of it. I'm going to leave these two shoots on the base. Uh, they will grow and help fatten the trunk. They may come off. I think they probably will come off at a later date. So now, um, all I'm going to do is touch me a piece of wire I'm quite happy with this shape for the time being, I'm not going to do anything with that So I'm going to push the wire into the soil next to the trunk anchor it that's it in it goes and then obviously why this portion now it has an interesting piece of movement just here already so I'm not gonna work too hard to do much with that and this piece is really too soft to be wired. Um, so I'm going to leave the wire as it is. I'm not even attempt to wire this piece until it has hardened off a bit more. Can you see that? Let me check. No, you can't. Okay, so I'm not going to wire this section because this is this year's growth and at the moment it's far too soft it's just going to snap so I'm just going to leave this section of wire and as this hardens up uh, I shall wire it some more and uh, attempt to give it a bit more character 
but basically yeah so that's the beginning idea and uh, hopefully this will come one of the side branches um, this another and so on so yeah so that's all there is to it for the apple I'll put that to one side and we'll go Cataniasta again same deal um, except this is a bit more firmer I'll be able to wire it to the tip and give it a bit more shape and I may even attempt to try and give this a bit of shape as well so I'm going to use a longer piece of wire I left my wire cutters out in the rain they need a touch of WD-40 very naughty of me so he pays your money and he takes your choice when you do these things Okay, my battery light is flashing, so I may have to stop filming and go and get a replacement battery in a minute. Okay, so I'm using one piece of wire to wire both trunks, as it were. I'm not to capture too many leaves under the wire. Mm. Always difficult to wire a thin branch with a thick piece of wire. Okay, so I'm going to stop recording a second. We're going to get a fresh battery before this just cobs out on us completely. Okay, so that's better. So now I've got a, a full battery. So, yeah, I'm going to start by bringing this tree down. I'm trying to put a bit of movement into the trunk as I go. Uh, you can have formal cascades which generally are very straight trees come down in a almost like a an inverted formal upright um, and obviously when you're talking in terms of cascades and semi cascades cascades come below the the base of the pot and semi cascades uh, don't but you know Rules aren't always there to be followed, and um, you do what pleases your eye, is my view. And um, you know, I don't f slavishly follow the rules of bonsai. You use them when they suit, and yet don't when they don't, I guess. But I'd never be one that says, you know, you can't do that, or you shouldn't do that. Um, unless it's something you shouldn't be doing because of horticultural values. If it's an artistic decision, um, I feel it is yours to make. Just as it is, you know, somebody else's decision to say I don't like that and I don't want to look at it. Uh, each to their own. So yeah, so that's... Then we have the beginnings of a cascade tree. I'm going to shorten that piece. And that piece. Mm, let's see if I can't twist that round a little bit. Yeah, that I prefer. Um, this piece, I'm just going to let it grow and then cut it back in a few years' time. So, yeah, so there's a Catania Hopefully I'll still be able to enjoy the flowers. I'm just going to take this piece of excess wire off. And uh, yeah, second tree done. 
a mm, little bit more movement. Okay, and so to the willow. Again, same thing. I'm simply going to wire this tree into the cascade style. It's, um, and then it's a question of waiting for the branches and the pads to grow. Uh, it doesn't suit everybody um, in terms of their preferred method of growing a tree. Let's, let's anchor the wire and It's difficult not to make them too cookie cutter like. So there. Oops. Apologies for that. So yeah, so again this tree I'm going to have come up from the ground, swerve over, come round in a much steeper angle almost around the pot before it turns in the opposite direction and why am I doing that? Again I'm just doing this by eye and it's what is pleasing my eye. Uh, this will become a branch which will kind of mirror over the trunk here. Um, some people may like that, some people may not. It pleases my eye, so I'm going to do it. Uh, it would be nice to get a branch coming off here somewhere. And I'm just going to cut back the growing points of these in the hope that I will get some kind of back budding in this area. But you never can tell. And uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Uh, so there we have another cascade tree created. Okay, so here's a tree uh, that's done in a different way in that uh, this tree was wired and uh, branches selected and uh, then as you can see hopefully the trunk was wired into position and I've been um, all the wires oh dear start again Sid all the branches were wired into position some of them have been rewired subsequently as have these two and uh, and then subsequent pinching it out of the foliage to try and create foliage pads so yeah I don't know where you can see that because it's quite difficult on the turntable when it hangs down over the edge. But uh, as you can see from the back and the underneath, uh, quite clearly the sinuous curves that I put into the original trunk, which was quite straight. And um, yeah, I've been working on that ever since for probably two, three years. Or to get to this stage and still got quite a bit of refining to do. Can you come to help, have you Cooper? He's a helpful dog. That's it, you turn the turn table. Come on, you may as well be in the video. <laughs> and gone. He's quite camera shy. Yeah, so anyway, that's another another look at a different tree. Okay, just for good measure, uh, let's do one coniferous tree. And again, I'm not going to pretend that I've just chosen a tree at random. Uh, I've chosen this Suara Cypress, um, which I think I can make work. And uh, yeah, I like working with Suara Cypress there. They're a really nice tree to work with, so we'll give this one a whirl. Wow. 
Okay, so here we have my fun little saguaro. Um, all these were taken from cuttings from the big, bigger trees I've got. As you can see, this has gone absolutely nuts in terms of root growth. Um, I really should have repotted these this year. Uh, I'm just going to cut this root off because I want this pot to stand a bit more securely and not wobble about. That's better. It's sitting better now. Much happier with that. Um, let's raise the camera up slightly so you can see the whole tree. That's better. Yeah, so this is just, it was literally a cutting taken um, maybe three years ago. Sit firmly. There. And, um, the biggest problem with these trees is that you do get dieback if they don't get any light. So, okay, so what we're going to do is start by removing these dead pieces here uh, they're too small to make use of in terms of a gin or anything but would have been nice perhaps if you could have but we can't have everything and if we did we'd probably be bored with it after a little while and still want something else quickly work through clearing out the dead pieces be careful only to pull out the dead pieces and not to cut anything that's uh, living higher up now what this does do is open up this tree um, quite significantly base but that's not too much of a problem. In life you do see in conifers, um, really old conifers you can stand underneath and there's a lot of limb before you get to foliage quite often so it can help create a semblance of age. Okay so let's clean that up quite nicely and what I'm looking at here is uh, bringing this piece down and using one of these as the head so as you can see I may lose these inner pieces in fact I'm going to lose those because they're just going to get shielded out anyway so I need to find some, a fairly chunky piece of wire so bear with me while I do that okay so <laughs> I got myself a chunky piece of wire but the tree is so pot bound um, that I can't actually get the wire down into the trunk and I've had to literally uh, cut this pot away um, yeah, now that's a pot bound tree. So I am going to cut the base off of this tree because everything's just going round and round in circles anyway. And um, shorten some of the roots back. Thusly. And. Um, Just going to because I don't want to work hard and get these uh, roots too much more shallow because it's going to be a cascade tree. I'm just going to snip the roots around thusly so that they're no longer going around and around and around the tree, and then I'm going to pop it into a bigger pot. But before I do that, let's 
may look vicious, but it will aid the tree in rooting out into the newer medium in the long run. Um, I am also going to use my root hook to force me a hole into the root ball that I can put my piece of wire. Okay, so I can now anchor said piece of wire into the ground and uh, begin the wiring process. Being careful not to trap any foliage. Or any branches. bend into the trunk there. And I should have cut the wire a bit longer but you get the idea. Um, okay so I'm gonna stop recording and pop this into a bigger pot. And then we'll be back for a bit of final styling. Well, not final styling, but you know what I mean. Okay, so tree's in a new larger pot. And uh, this wire isn't quite enough to take the bend uh, to, for the tree. However, uh, let's see if I can get this so you can see it. If I put this down, it is in fact causing a more of a bend there. So what I'm going to do is use a piece of wire uh, We have what was the label slot of this pot which I can put a piece of wire through and I can tuck this piece of wire under the wire, if I can. A little bit like threading a needle. There. Like so. And then I can use that, like so, to pull Pull that down. So yeah, it's just a question of twist and pull and that will pull that tree chunk down into place. Okay, so yeah, as you can see, I've used that piece of wire to pull the trunk down into a more vertical position and uh, cut away the excess. And now I need to make a choice with all these extra branches. And I'm thinking I could wire these two branches like so and shorten, shorten this one off to uh, there at least. That would give me something interesting to begin with. That's why it's possibly a bit over thick for this job. Um, 
but it's what I've got here just to hand and uh, will certainly do the job and I often find it's easier until you get down to the thinnest of thin branches anyway to use a thicker piece of wire I mainly use the clip and grow method um, as you can probably tell I'm not the most elegant of wirers but it's what gets the job done is the important part I only really use wiring when I don't see a way around it so yeah so let's just move these wires ah, these branches into some semblance of treeness I'll take off these pieces hanging down And then, I guess we're going to want to refine these into pads. I'm just going to tear back the growing tips. And that's one of the reasons why I like working with this species. is because they're not rough on your hands. They're, they're actually very tactile species. And almost like stroking a pet. And they have a, a kind of a fur-like. And I mean fur in the sense of the uh, cat skin than in the sense of a tree you wouldn't want to stroke a fur particularly okay so i'm going to remove this piece under here that's sticking straight down and this piece that's sticking straight out i want to Show off a bit of this trunk line. Uh, again, this piece here. Okay, so another piece of wire. Uh, lost my wire cutters. How is it that you can lose something? There they are. When you don't even move your bum from the chair and you turn around and they're gone. Okay, so being careful not to cross the wires too much. That is a, a practical impossibility at times. But uh, we're going to wire this branch. Together with uh, this branch, and then again, I'm just going to pinch them out because what we should want from this is the beginnings of a pad. I'm going to cut off these that are growing downwards. Okay, now I may well uh, wire these branches next year when they've grown a bit fatter, but for now um, I'm just going to wire up this piece and then we will be done for the day. So let's 
quickly do that. And get a wire in that gap just there. As I say, there are much. If you want to know how to wire? There are much better videos than mine to uh, to watch. Um, I get the job done, but it's not elegant. And I'm repeating myself now, so I should shut up. <laughs> Actually, it's my video, so I'll shut up when I'm ready, which is now. Okay, so. <coughs> neighbor's dog quieting down yeah so there we go there is my take on the beginnings of another bonsai and I said I was finished but I'm not this is going to be a very long video I hope you guys don't mind it I'm gonna add in a second piece of wire here because I'm not happy with the movement down here um, lock into place that's it got it right so that's locked into place and then That makes the trunk line slightly more interesting. Um, you remove a couple of branches now that are again in the wrong place. Um, don't want that on the inside. Then a few of these out at the back. have it. Chris Murtar. Um, I hope that was helpful and has given you some insight into creating a cascade tree. Thank you everyone for watching. It's been a long video. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care of yourselves.